Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear about the moon? Is China one of them? Well, let's talk a little bit more about what China has just proposed and welcome to What The Math. You know, when it comes to various moon colonies, every major space agency has quite a lot of ideas. This right here is a mock-up of what the European Space Agency imagined their moon colony might look like. Here's one from NASA that was made a few years ago, and here's one from many decades ago made by the Soviet scientist who imagined the future of Soviet Union on the moon. But so far, none of the countries were able to achieve what they wished or hoped to achieve. We don't have the uh, industrial USSR base on the moon. We don't have the research facilities uh, planned by NASA. And we definitely don't have these futuristic looking domes that were designed by ESA a few years ago. And for the most part, it's really not the lack of technology or lack of interest. It's more or less lack of funding and money. It's mostly because nobody really wants to pay billions of dollars for this mission, assuming that there might not really be a lot of financial profits to be made, unless we of course discover something very useful on the moon that can then be taken to Earth. Now, some scientists suggested that we could one day discover things to mine on the moon, like maybe helium that's slowly disappearing on the planet, or some other materials that could be very precious on Earth. Right now, all of this is speculation and we're just not really sure. Financially, there is very little in terms of benefits to go to the moon and to try to make anything there. However, China has something unusual planned. And it's something that relates to an idea that has worked here on Earth really well, at least for China. Now, once again, this is going to probably create a lot of division in the comments because all of my previous China videos resulted in many people uh, focusing on the fact that China is definitely doing a lot of bad things. And I don't disagree with that. But there are still a lot of things that they are doing that no one else is doing. One of them was, of course, was the tremendously large reforestation project that I mentioned in one of the previous videos. But there is something else that they're doing that also works for them really well. And that's something that has to do with economics. So essentially, what China has just officially announced is that they want to create what's known as a special economic zone on the moon. Now, it might not really make much sense, especially if you're coming from the Western world or the English-speaking world where such a thing doesn't exist. But let me very quickly explain to you what this implies. The first special economic zone that was ever created anywhere in the world was this right here. This is the really famous area known as Shenzhen. And this is the image uh, about two years after this area was created with only one main purpose. China decided to create these regions around the country with only one purpose. Bring in the money from the outside and encourage people to come to these areas and to use the relatively cheap labor in these areas to construct, produce, or make anything they wanted, and then basically use this for an export. Essentially, it was a, a way for China to create these areas where anyone can come in, use the labor, build and create anything they wanted, and then take those items and bring them back to their own country. And essentially, it was a way for China to bring in the external capital, um, allowing them to not actually pay any taxes whatsoever and also be independent from any kind of governing, while at the same time helping those areas develop quite quickly and transform them into something that they never were able to do before. It worked amazingly well for Shenzhen, it became essentially the factory of the world where most of the electronics are produced today, and at the same time it allowed China to benefit from all of this financially, but also learn how to apply this to other areas. They've created a few of these around China, all of them or most of them were pretty successful, and most of the success came from the fact that people or companies that came in to do things there didn't have to pay any taxes, the labor was really, really cheap, and at the same time, none of the communist government ideals were actually um, effective there. So essentially, this was an area where you could do anything you want, you can build anything you want, and use very cheap labor, and it slowly built up China using the finances from other countries. Having become pretty successful at developing these areas, and also having essentially developed 
a very effective strategy for how to develop these areas, they then took these ideas and applied them to other countries. And this is what most people don't actually realize. They took this fundamentally Chinese idea and they exported it in a sense to countries that now had the cheap labor. Mostly because the Chinese labor was no longer cheap and most countries actually started to kind of go to other areas to try to create their products. And this image from Asia Briefing Limited summarizes quite uh, accurately where all of these zones are located around the world now. Pretty much most of the African countries, a lot of European countries, uh, very many Southeast Asian countries as well, have these zones now that are actually being developed by China. And in all of those areas, a very similar concept is being formed. Here's one from the country of Belarus, um, where China is very actively trying to create this industrial park. And um, it essentially is building the same thing. The companies from around the world will come in there, they'll use the cheap labor to build up anything they want, and the thing is, this time China will also benefit from all of these developments. In other words, in some way you can see this as Chinese domination of the world through economics. In other sense, you can also see it as a very brilliant way of helping the underdeveloped countries develop, while also bringing a lot of really interesting ideas to the table. Something that no other country has actually been able to do just yet. So anyway, so all of this is politics and economics. This is not really the main idea for this video. The main idea is the recent announcement by one of the directors of China Aerospace Agency to essentially start planning a mission to the moon that would create the special economic zone on the moon. In other words, they are planning to create this type of a special economic system right here on our satellite. And this is kind of where things get a little bit more tricky because, first of all, back in 1983, China joined the United Nations Outer Space Treaty that essentially uh, prevents anyone from owning the moon. From The satellite of Earth is not actually conquerable by any one nation and it's meant to prevent any future wars, space wars, or I guess a better word would be Star Wars, in regards to our own satellite. But the thing is, China is not really planning to own anything. What they're intending to do is build an area where other countries can bring their equipment, they can bring their resources, and they can start producing things with the support from Chinese infrastructure. So we're not entirely sure what they actually are trying to do, but from the limited information that was provided, they do intend to start building 3D printing facilities, essentially use the lunar resources to create something akin to this image from the Soviet Union back in the days. And they're definitely aiming at something more than just research. They're not going to be creating any science facilities. Instead, they're going to create, or at least try to create, some sort of a industrial area similar to Shenzhen, except, of course, on the moon. Now, it's a, a very, very difficult task. As a matter of fact, it's uh, currently almost completely impossible to do simply because of the logistics involved. But it looks like China is actually taking this seriously. Because normally, in this government, you're not really allowed to just say things and then not follow through. In Chinese culture, or actually any Asian culture, the face value is very important. So if you say something and then you don't do it, normally you can get in a lot of trouble for um, essentially making the government look bad. And to make this a reality, China is already investing a lot of money into the so-called space-based solar power. Essentially, they're thinking of building a tremendously large solar panel in space and use that to power up the activities on the moon. And the so-called SBSP is going to be officially launched in 2025 with further developments up until 2050 when China expects to produce a lot of energy using this technology. However, for the lunar station, China expects to come up with all of the necessary technology, including the 3D printing technology, by 2030. It's a very ambitious goal, and it's definitely something that might be not very easy to achieve, because in the last few years, China has not really been doing so well financially. Nevertheless, if successful, they expect this will actually have a huge return. The value they expect to get um, in the beginning is up to about 10 trillion US dollars, which would actually be a huge return on investment. And because China gets to kind of play around here on Earth and test these ideas and these principles by using these special economic zones in various countries, they're probably going to be able to create something that might potentially work on the moon as well. However, they do have to be a little bit careful, mostly because the law is the law. 
The international law specifically states that you're not allowed to own this land. So they'll have to find a way to basically build this economic zone without claiming any ownership or remove themselves from the agreement, which might actually upset a lot of people and could create potential financial problems later on. Specifically because uh, China expects other countries to actually come and build things in that special economic zone. So if no one trusts China for quitting the treaty, they might not actually get any clients. Nevertheless, I'm personally really excited to see where China gets with this. I'm not entirely sure if they'll be able to successfully complete this project. And it's not that I don't actually believe that they can do it or that they're not going to have technology to do it. But remember, the Soviet Union also had these grandiose ideas and a lot of faith in their own structure that they will be able to create something like this. Even in 1986, there was a very interesting newspaper article that I'm posting in the description below. This is from the New York Times that had a lot of ambitious ideas for the uh, Soviet Union in the 90s. They even expected to send a manned mission to Mars in early 2000s and they had a lot of things that they had hopes for. Then, approximately five years later, Soviet Union no longer existed. And it's a really interesting article to read. It does explain and show you what the um, typical scientists believed back in mid-80s in the Soviet Union. They had a lot of hopes and they actually did not think that it would be impossible. So in that sense, knowing what I know about communist governments and centralized governments in general, I would still take this with a grain of salt. And personally, my money is on Elon Musk and SpaceX. I'm not entirely sure I would trust a centralized government to complete projects 30 years in the future. Although, if they could at least build this, that would be pretty impressive. Well, so once we discover more about what China is doing and once we actually hear a little bit more about their lunar mission, I'm definitely going to come back and make a follow-up video. For now, that's really it. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye. Or as they say in China, Chai Tian. <laughs>